he is in this place, you don't have to go out. You don't have to leave here the same way you came. Amen. Now, I got to tell you something. If you came here and you're you're jumping, you're praising God, well, you can still skip higher and praise Him louder. Amen. See, you can go even, even that, you can go out greater. But if you come in here and you're carrying burdens, you're carrying sorrows and, 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 and all these other things, and then sickness and disease, whatever it might be, the only reason many people don't receive because they never ask. The Lord says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Who's you? That is every single one that you just call on the name of Jesus, every single one. And if you're here today and, and uh, you perhaps have never received the gift, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that is the most powerful, most loving thing you could ever, ever have. In fact, God wants you to have it. Because you see, if you believe that God loves you, there is one way that you can know that God really, truly does. Because in Romans 5 and 5, it says here, for the love of God. You see, you and I can feel the presence of God. Amen? And when we come together in the name of Jesus, we feel the beautiful presence of God. But Romans 5 and 5 goes a little deeper than that. It says, for the love of God, because he loves us, amen, is shed abroad where? In our hearts. How? By the Holy Ghost. Amen? So it's not enough for you just to feel the presence of God. God wants you to experience the love of God. Amen. And when you experience the love of God, miracles take place in your life. Amen. God will heal you. Amen. God will deliver you. Amen. God will remove all the shame from you. God will remove all the guilt out of your life. Amen. God will give you hope. Amen. God will give you joy. Amen. God will give you a peace that no man can take from you. I thank God. Amen. Even when we go through situations, even when we go through sorrows, even when we go through hard times, amen, the Bible says let the peace of God that passes all understanding, amen, that will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Troubles can't take the peace of God from me, amen. Sad times cannot take the peace of God from me. Hard times cannot take the peace of God from me, amen. Because what God has given to me, no man can take. What God has given to you, understand this, the devil can't take it from you, people People can't take it from you. Circumstances cannot take, take it from you. Whatever God has given to you, it belongs to you. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. You need to remember that. Hallelujah. What God has given to you, praise the Lord. One of the scriptures I confess oftentimes, right, is that God, you've not given me a spirit of fear. You've, you've given me the spirit of, you've not given me the spirit of fear, but you give me a power and love. And what else? A sound mind. And that is why every single night when I put my head on my pillow, I can just go to sleep like a baby. Because I don't lay there and worry. I don't lay there and get stressed out. I don't lay there. Amen. No, because what God has given to me, devil, you can't come in the middle of the night there and disturb me. Hello? Amen? Devil, you can't do that. Because what God has given to me, devil, you can't take from me. Can you say praise the Lord? And now we're going to go into the Word of God. <laughs> I, I, I want to open up with some very familiar verses of the Scripture here this morning. John 3, 16 and 17. Very familiar verse of the Scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says here, oh, wait a minute. I like it when people open up their Bibles. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can take a minute. Hallelujah. I think it's always good to be able to see it for yourself, what the Word of God says. Amen? Praise the Lord. In fact, if it wasn't for myself seeing what the Word of God says, let me say this. If it wasn't for myself making my mind to see what the Word of God says, I would never receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I say that because as I was searching for God, amen, I heard all these negative things about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I was warned by preachers, watch out for those people who speak in tongues, amen. I was told that it doesn't happen today. I was even told by, quote, Christians that, you know, it's of the devil. But one day I said, well, God, when I get home today, I am going to open up my Bible and I'm going to see what does your word say about it. And I'm so thankful that I made up my mind to see what God's Word says. Because, you see, when you open up the Word of God and you see what God's Word says, you know, you can't argue with it, first of all, amen? Or you can, but you're foolish if you do. 
But you see, God's word is simple. God's word is pure. God's word is love. And when I saw it in Luke there, it says, how much more the Father will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask. I thought, my God, I never asked. Nobody ever told me I had to ask. So I asked in my kitchen. I raised my Bible to the roof there. I said, now, Lord, this is what your word says. How much more the Father will give the Holy Ghost to them? I said, now, Lord, I'm asking you for this Holy Ghost. And I thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. Amen? Well, nothing happened that day. That was a Tuesday. But the following day, I went to work, and I knew people who had the Holy Ghost. And I went and told them all. I said, you know, I got the Holy Ghost. 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 And they all looked at me and said, you don't have the Holy Ghost. I said, oh, yes, I do. They said, you haven't spoken in tongues. I said, I understand that. Here's something about faith, my friends, okay? In Mark chapter 11, it says, whatever you pray for, believing, amen, doubting nothing, you shall receive. It's already yours. You see, when you ask God for something and you just don't doubt it in your heart, you trust God, you believe God, you can confess that it is already yours. You see, it was, uh, they didn't understand, amen, but they didn't understand my faith, they didn't understand where I was coming from, amen, but I said, oh, yes, I do, and I began to continue to thank the Lord. Well, the following day, just in the simple living room, in the living room, I'm just praying, and as I'm praying in the living room, God walked in that living room. He walked right up to me. I'm telling you, I could not see him. But I am telling you this there. I could feel his mighty presence. And then something started happening here in my throat here. And I thought, what is this? But instantly I remember the scripture says that God would not give us a serpent, a stone, a rock, all those things, right? I says, God, if this is of you, then God, you just let it happen. And when I said that there, immediately, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I was speaking in another language. I was speaking being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost right there in that living room. I'm telling you, wherever you are and you call upon the name of the Lord, he is there. Amen? I like that. One more time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 we are familiar with these verses of Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right. Amen? Amen? One more verse of Scripture is found in Luke, another familiar verse of Scripture there, Luke 4 and 18. Jesus declares, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Let me tell you something. We've all been bruised. Amen? I said, we've all been bruised. And maybe today you're standing here today and, and you're still bruised. But I'm here to tell you that God is here to heal you and to deliver you from being abused, amen, and being bruised, amen. You know, we've all been captive to something, amen. But Jesus Christ says, I've come to set the captives free. So I don't care what it is that you may be captive to. There's a lot of things, amen, that you could be captive to. Everything's different for every one of us. What you're captive to may not have been what I was captive to, amen, but I was captive to it. Can you say amen? But Jesus Christ says, listen, I have come, amen, to set the captives free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. And what I want to do this morning, I pray with the help of the Lord, is just to minister on the goodness of God today. Amen. The goodness of God today. In Luke chapter 19 and 10, Jesus declares these words here. He says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let me say that again. For the Son of Man is come to seek, thank you, Jesus, and to save that which was lost. I got news for you. Jesus is looking for you. I said, he's looking for you. He said, well, how do you know that he's looking for me? Well, because, again, the Word of God declares in Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen? Because of sin, we're all lost. Amen? 
Hey, we're all alike here. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Because of sin, we're all in the same category. We're all in the same boat. We're all in the same world. For God so loved this world that humanity is residing in, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, amen, that we that believe on him should be saved, have everlasting life. And let me go just one more step further here this morning. You know, Sometimes, at least the way I was brought up, is, is that when you die, then you find out who God is and where he is, and, and then you get all God's blessings then. You've got to wait till you die, hello, until you can know God, experience his goodness, experience his blessings. But I'm here to tell you today, amen, if you don't know this, God wants you to understand this, that he is the God of the living. God is the living God, amen, and God is here in our midst, amen, and God does care for you, amen. He cares about where you are. He he cares about what's going on in your life. He cares about your eternity. And God wants to bless you. Amen. I promise you. Amen. God wants to bless you. He wants you to know him and to know him now and to know him in the power of the resurrection, to know him in his mighty love, to know him in his mighty grace, to know him in his mighty comfort, amen, and all the good things of God because God is good and God is love. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think sometimes, especially it's harder for some people. I know I go through this myself, so I'm not picking on anybody here. But the longer you walk with God, hello, and I wonder if I can get a witness of this here. The longer you walk with God, it seems like the more condemnation you bring to yourself because of your failures. You know, it's harder sometimes for the people of God to get over their failures than it is for a brand new child, born, born again child of God. You know, someone who comes down to the altar for the very first time, gets the Holy Ghost, gets delivered, gets healed, gets a brand new life, is excited, goes around, hello, praise the Lord. And so some of us who have been walking with God for a season, hello, you fall. I'm not talking about a major fall. It's just that you fall. Amen. And then you beat yourself up, and you have a hard time believing that God still loves you. Amen. You have a hard time believing that God has put that aside. You have a hard time believing that God has not left you and has not forsaken you. Can you say amen? amen? I'm telling you, the Bible says that God is love, and he doesn't stop loving. That's right. Amen? That's right. Praise the Lord. So, I want to tell a story or go through the story in um, John chapter 4. It's about the woman at the well. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the woman at the well. But I just want to go through her life just a little bit this morning, if that's okay. And uh, praise the Lord. If you've never read John chapter 4 and about the woman at the well, it's a very, very, very beautiful place. Uh, it's a very loving place. It's a very kind place. And it's a place to show you, too, one of the places, many places. But you know what? One thing that God did not do, he did not come into this world to shame us. Amen? You know, you heap enough shame upon yourself to begin with. And it's sad to say, some of those who are closer to you, they heap shame upon you, too. You know, when you fail, right, somebody's there to heap some shame upon you. When you fail, you can stand from the mirror, and you can stand there, and you can heap shame upon yourself. I wonder where all that's coming from. It's certainly not coming from a very loving God. Amen? You need to, I pray to God, I, I really truly pray to God that you understand the love of God is so magnificent, amen, so powerful, so wonderful. I have a few testimonies this morning here that I believe will demonstrate because I've seen some things of God, and when I've seen these things, amen, I, I stand back, and every time I see something, I'm at awe at the love of God. I'm at awe at the mercies of God. I'm at awe of the goodness of God. And I really appreciate, I mean, everything that God has done and is doing. Well, when you read the story of the woman at the well, you'll find that Jesus was on a journey. I believe he was going to Jerusalem, but he had to go through a place called Samaria, and uh, he was tired. And so it was a hot day. He was tired, and, and he took a break. When I say he took a break, he rested a little bit. Okay? It's okay to rest a little bit. We all need to rest a little bit. Amen? But his disciples left and went into the town to buy some food supplies. And so while Jesus was sitting there by himself, 
I never believe that Jesus is any place by accident. <laughs> Amen. I never believe that Jesus is any place by accident. Wherever Jesus is, he's there for a purpose. So it wasn't just by accident, amen, that he was there, but he was waiting. Hallelujah. You see, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save them which are lost. Well, you see, he's sitting at the well, and guess what he's doing? He's seeking for this woman that he knows is going to come to the well. You see, this woman, she came to the well, if you first of all look at, it was around noontime. And she purposely came at noontime, and noontime was the, hard, the hottest part of the day there. But there is a reason why she came there, and it was no accident. She came there, number one, by herself. Number two, she picked the hottest time of the day. The reason being because this woman here was an outcast, as you will see. She was an outcast. Nobody came to the well at that time of the day. Whenever they were to feed their animals, the lambs, the sheep, what have you, okay, it was always in the cool of the day. They would never bring their sheep out there to suffer that heat at the zenith of the day. Amen? So being an outcast, nobody wants to be around her, and she's ashamed of herself. Amen. She wasn't boasting about her life, so she needed the water. So she always takes the occasion to go when she knows nobody's going to shame me. Nobody's going to say anything bad about me. Nobody's going to laugh at me. Nobody's going to turn the back on me. Nobody's going to kind of walk away from me. Amen. You got the picture there? Amen. So it wasn't by accident that she had chosen that part of the day. And then when we go down to verse 10 here, let me read it for you here. Verse 10 the Lord says this here to her. If thou knewest, speaking to her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. If you only knew is what he was saying, amen? If you only knew. You know, there was a time in my life, maybe just like your life and maybe even today, right? You know about God. I, I believe I heard your brother say that, you know, that they've heard of Jesus. They know about him, okay? There was a time that I knew about God. I heard about God, but I did not know him, right, right. amen? You see, there's a lot of people. And some of us just like you and I. I grew up knowing something about God. I knew there was a heaven. I knew there was a hell. Okay. I knew there was a God. I knew there was a devil. But I never knew him. And because I never knew him, I could never receive that gift of living waters that Jesus had prepared for me. And it wasn't until I knew him, amen, and knew that he loved me and knew that he cared about me, knew that he gave his life for me, amen, that I could reach out by faith and I can reach out to a loving God, amen, and ask God to forgive me for my sins, ask God to forgive me and to deliver me of my past there, and ask God to fill me with the baptism of the living waters waters the holy ghost and god does, therefore did that can you say amen? amen it's not to know about god but god wants you to know him god wants you to have a relationship with him an everlasting relationship with him amen and as you have that everlasting relationship with him i promise you no matter where you go no matter what takes place in your life god is there with you even the big things and in the small things. Can you say amen? Amen, amen, amen? Let me just give you a little story here. Some years ago, my wife and I, we moved down to Virginia. And now because we moved down to Virginia, we need a new living room set. And at that, that time, we walked into a particular store. And my wife and I, we, we saw this living room set that, oh, we both really liked. And you know how it is when a husband and wife like the same thing? Hey, Wow. That, yeah, that is great. <laughs> that is, oh, that is awesome. That is wonderful. Amen. And so uh, it was kind of expensive. And so my wife says, well, what do you think, Al? I said, okay, well, Sandra, I'll tell you what. Let me just stand here for a moment. Now, the salesman was there. My wife was there. My children were there. I said, let me just stand here. And I prayed. I said, now, Lord, I like this. My wife likes it. But should we buy this now, Lord? And the Lord spoke to me and says, don't buy this. Okay. Because we had already asked the salesman if it was going to go on sale. 
before I prayed. We said, hey, is this going to go on sale? He said, no, this is a brand new line item. He said, it'll be at least a year before this goes on sale. He opens up the books. He shows it to us and all that kind of stuff. And he was being very honest about it. He wasn't trying to put one over us, okay? But the Lord says, no. So I told my wife, I said, Sandra, uh, the Lord says, no. She said, okay. And we walked away. That was it. Well, about two or three weeks later, we were in that same store, not for the, uh, the set or anything. We were going there to get some clothes and what have you, okay? And we have to walk by it. Well, as we walk by it, guess what? There's a big sign there, for sale. <laughs> $350 off what it was. All right. Amen? Now, just in case you think that I just ran in there and said, oh, hey, hey we're going to buy it now. No. My wife said, what do you think, Al? I said, Sandra, let me talk to God right now. So I stood there. Okay, in that department store, I said, now, Lord, look, it's on sale now. Is it okay? And the Lord says, go ahead. It's okay. Yeah. You know, sometimes we think that God only cares about the big, big things. Amen. But I got news for you. God cares about every little thing. He cares about every aspect of our needs. Can you say Amen. Amen. Now, that's the God I serve, and that's the God you serve. There's no difference. Amen. What he'll do for me, he'll do for you. What he'll do for you, he'll do for me. Praise the Lord. He's not a respecter of persons, my friend. I said, God's not a respecter of persons. You've just got to trust him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, you acknowledge him. And what God will do, he'll direct your path. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, let's move on just a little bit here. Well, you know, here, as an example, right, when I happened to mention to you that, you know, I knew about God, but I did not know him. Amen. I did not have a relationship with him. Therefore, I was not able at that time to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's interesting that in Matthew chapter 11, now, the chapter 11, I can always remember chapter 11, verse 28. You know why? Can anybody guess why I can remember 11 and 28? It was my birthday. Anybody wants to buy me a birthday present, remember, November the 28th. <laughs> but Matthew chapter 11 and 28 says this here. It says here, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can I tell you something? I've never had the rest of my life like I've had the rest in the Holy Ghost. I've never had rest in my life in my mind, in my spirit, my soul, until I met Jesus Christ and knew him. It goes on here a little bit. He says, take my yoke upon you and look at Here's the key. Here is the key for every one of us. He says, come and learn of me. Amen. You see, again, I have to emphasize, it's not enough to say, yeah, I know God or I know about God, but have you learned of him? Amen. He says, come and learn. Because the more that you learn of him, the more you'll understand how much he loves you. The more you'll understand how he'll provide for you. The more you'll understand how he cares for you. The more you'll understand, amen, of his grace and his mercy and his loving kindness and all of his goodness. Amen. The more you learn of Jesus, you'll find he is so opposite of this world. He is so opposite of hell. Amen. He is so opposite of the devil. Amen. He is so opposite of of hate. Amen. He's so opposite of strife. He's so opposite of bitterness. He's so opposite of anger. And if you have any of that in your heart today and you're experiencing all those kind of things, I'm going to encourage you today. You don't have to tell anybody. Just tell Jesus. Amen. You don't have to tell anybody, but you can come up to the altar. Amen. And say, Lord, I've been battling with this anger. I've been battling with this, 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 this uh, anger and, and this uh, everything else. And you can leave it right here. You can leave bitterness right here. You can leave anger right here. You can leave disappointment right here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why do you want to carry that stuff with you? Can I ask you a question? Is it doing any good for you? I mean, if you're honest with yourself, I mean, if you're angry at somebody, has it really blessed you? If you're bitter with somebody, is it really blessing you? No. No, because that, first of all, is not of the love of God. Amen? The love of God is so powerful. 
Let me say the love of God is so powerful. It's so powerful. That's why you are able, if you choose to, but you are able by the power of the Holy Ghost to love the unlovable. You are able, amen. I don't have time this morning here to give you all the different kind of testimonies, but I know, I am without a shadow of a doubt, that God is able to give you power to forgive those who have done you wrong and to love them. It's not just forgiving them, but there's something, something about the love of God and the power of God that he gives you his love that you are able to actually love them. Amen? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God is not of this world? Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's go on here. Uh, real quickly, praise the Lord. You know, in verse 13 and 14 again of, of John ch chapter 4, right? The Lord says here, you know, if you ask of this water that I have, this living water, he says, you will what? You will never, ever thirst again. You will never, ever thirst again. Can I tell you, before I found the truth in Jesus Christ, I searched here, and I searched there, and I searched here, there, and everywhere. But I never had that contentment. I was never full. I was never satisfied. But when I found the truth in Jesus Christ, and it's almost 40 years, or it is 40 years ago now. When I found the truth in Jesus Christ, I don't search anymore. I don't have to search because I have found the true one. Amen. I have found, when he says the fountain of living waters, you know that fountain has not stopped in 40 years? Hello? That fountain will never stop in you. He says, I give you the fountain of living waters. You've just got to activate that fountain. And let me tell you how you activate that fountain. Amen. You continue to praise him. You, begin, you continue just to thank him for all the things that God has done. You see, when you begin to remember, amen, the things that God has done for you, and you begin just to praise him, and you worship him, and you thank him, and I don't care how you feel, but you just keep on doing that, amen. You know what? You will cause the fountains of living waters, amen, to be activated, amen. And when the fountains of living waters are activated, amen, again, it changes you. Again, it gives you joy. Again, the peace of God. Again, the riches and the goodness of God is all there with you. I can't imagine anyone not wanting to walk in that dimension of the love and the goodness and the grace and the mercies and the kindness that God has for us. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're working, do you smile on a job? <laughs> you go to school, do you smile at any time? Does anybody know that you're happy in the Lord? Amen. It's time to show the world, amen, that you have something to be happy about. It's time to show the world, and because, see, the world is looking for you. You see, Jesus found you. Now the world is looking for you. Because, see, the world is still looking for Jesus. And you're the only Jesus that they're going to see. Amen. Because he is resident in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So they're out there waiting. They're out there waiting for you. Praise the Lord. Now, verse 16 and 18, I'll go here. It says, Jesus said unto her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and he whom thou now has is not your husband. And that saidest thou truly. Amen. This woman that Jesus was seeking to save, amen, sitting on the well, waiting for her to come on her day. He said, go call your husband. He wasn't shaming her. He's just building up her faith. He's having a, he's having a conversation with her. But she honestly answered, she said, I don't have a husband. Now, she didn't tell him the rest of the story. She just simply said, I didn't have a husband. And the truth was that Jesus said, you, you know, you are telling the truth. Lady, you're telling the truth. You don't have a husband, but you've had five husbands, and the man you're living with right now is not your husband. And this began to open her eyes, began to open her heart, began to open her understanding that this man, because she says, you, I, I perceive you must be a prophet, 
Because how can anybody know this except they're a prophet, a man of God? Amen? But if we take her story, now let's take her story for almost 2,000 years ago. And let's bring her up to today. Let's bring her to here today. Let's bring that woman up here today. Let me tell you who she would be. Her name is Janice. She was a prostitute. I'm speaking of a real young lady. Okay. Prostitute since she was a teenager. Now 25 years old at the time. A full drug addict. Two children. Not married. Full blown AIDS. Untouchable. Do you know anybody like Janice? You know, they're all around you. Amen. No matter where you go, they're all around you. And you may know some. Untouchable. God, give us the love that God has given to us. Because the Bible says, again, that God so loved the world. He loved Janice. And he loves everybody just like her, male or female. Amen. And God wants us to love as God loves. I would hope and pray, amen, that the church, that the church would not be one of these individuals that would go like this and just kind of, Walk away, because after all, that person's dirty. After all, that person's doing disgusting things. After that person there is this, and after that person is there is doing that. Jesus never looked on anybody as dirty, unclean, not worthy of his love, compassion, mercy, tenderness. Amen. Amen. So there she is. She's cast into jail. She's in darkness. And she's alone. And Janice has absolutely no hope. Somehow somebody asked me to go visit her. I never knew Janice before this one particular day. But somebody went and asked me, would I go visit this woman? I said, okay. So I went to the jail, and she sat there on a stool, and there was a big, thick plexiglass between us, but there was a phone there. She could pick up the phone on her end, and I could pick up the phone on my end. And that woman would not look up. Janice would not look up. She just sat there completely broken. She could not look at you face to face. There was no life there with her. But I spoke these words to Janice. I said, Janice, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I said, Janice, I'll tell you what you do. I want you to put your hands up here on this plexiglass glass thing here. Put both your hands over here, Janice. I said, Janice, I'm going to put the phone down here for a moment here. And I'm going to put my hands on the other side here. And as I put my hands on this side here, God is going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Is that okay, Janice? I put the phone down. She put her two hands up there. And I put my two hands up there. And simply, God, fill her now with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And let me tell you something. Immediately, God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And she began to speak in other tongues. And she began to shed. If you had a bucket there, her tears, her tears would have filled that bucket because such love of God. It wasn't tears of sorrow. It wasn't tears of condemnation. But it was the tears of the greatest love any soul could ever experience. And she experienced it right there. Amen. <laughs> She experienced the love of God, and, and that changed her life. Amen. I baptized her in the name of Jesus Christ, and yes, I did do her funeral. Praise the Lord. 
But Janus went on to glory because, see, God saw something. You see, the Lord says, I'm going about seeking to save, amen, seeking the lost, to save the lost. A Janus, amen, is one of those lost. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Can we just praise the Lord right now? Hallelujah. 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 That's it. Come on. Hallelujah. Would you let God just touch your heart here this morning? The worst thing you do, the hardest thing you could do, really the worst thing you could do is really to be in the presence of God, amen, and to be stubborn, to hide your feelings from him, amen, to hide what's going on in him, to put your walls up before him when you are in the presence of Almighty God. God is not ever here to hurt you. He's not here to shame you. He's not here to put you down. I promise you, God is here to bless you, to deliver you, to give you hope, to give you new life. Amen? Here's something that's really incredible, okay? When you go down to verse 24, right, the Lord speaks about how they're to worship, and, and he says that, you know, we're to, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Now, in verse 25, this is what is incredible. When you look at the life of this woman, you would not think that these were her thoughts. She said here, the woman said unto him, I know. Now listen, she's been married five times. She's not proud of it. Amen? She's not proud of it. She's not boasting about it. She's not boasting about her present, her past life or anything. She's ashamed of it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But she says, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Amen? Can you say praise the Lord? You see, there are people all around us, and sometimes we are too quick to judge because we know their lifestyle. We know on one hand what they're doing. We hear what they're saying. We know where they're going. Amen? But what you don't know is what is really going on in the heart of that person. I said, that's what you really, really don't know. And because you don't know that, and because I don't know that, and because only God knows that, amen. God, help us to reach out to every individual that God, that we can reach out with love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, see, even though all these things happen, even though now maybe because after five husbands, wouldn't you kind of give up? Come on, let's be real. I said, wouldn't you kind of give up? It never works, so why should I try it on the sixth time? So the way the world thinks and the way that we are in this world, okay, let's just try it out. If it succeeds, well, then fine. If it doesn't, well, then I haven't lost anything because I didn't get married the sixth time. But in everything in her life, all the wrongs and all the tragedies and all the sorrows and all the guilt and all the shame and all the wrong things that she was doing inside her heart, she said, Messiah, I know you're coming. Messiah, I know you're coming. Messiah, I know you're coming. And when you come, when you come, you're going to show me all things. You're going to talk to me. You're going to help me. You're going to set me right. You're going to put me on the right path. You're going to show me how to get out of what I'm in, Lord. Amen? You see, there was a time as I was searching for God, I was told that I was saved because I accepted him in my heart. Amen? I'd never received the Holy Ghost. I was never baptized in Jesus' name, but somebody told me, a preacher told me that I was saved. And I was excited about that because that's the first time in my life I ever knew that I could actually talk to Jesus. I can actually pray to Jesus. I've never, ever taught to pray to Jesus in my life. Some of you here today, maybe you've never been, pro- you've never been taught that you could actually talk to Jesus. You can actually worship. You can actually pray to him, and he'll answer your prayers. Okay? So I was excited for a little season, a little season, maybe a month. But I was still doing the same things. Hello? I was still living a very sinful lifestyle. And one day, I said to God, I said, God, I'm supposed to be a Christian. You see, you don't have to tell a sinner how a Christian is supposed to live. They know. 
Amen. You ever want to know how Christians are supposed to live? Ask the sinner. They'll tell you. <laughs> that is the truth. And I was a sinner. And nobody had to come and tell me what I was doing was wrong. I knew what I was doing. But I asked the Lord this one question. I said, Lord, why am I still doing these same things that would take me to hell? You know, sin is sin. And I don't care where the world is going with the philosophy. I don't care where the world is going with their teaching. I don't care where the world is going and telling you what you must believe. You need to separate yourself from that ideology. You need to separate yourself from those things and put yourself over here in the hands of God and in the Word of God. Sin is sin is sin is sin. And you need to understand, though God loves you, amen, God hates sinners. I mean, he hates the sin. When a person stands before God, and that they've not been saved. God doesn't stop loving them. But God hates sin. And guess where sin is? Sin is in the person. Because until you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, the washing away of your sins, your sins are still there. So when you stand before God, amen, he's only looking for one thing, and he's looking for the blood. He's looking that his blood was applied to your life because you believed him, you trusted him, you obeyed him, you repented of your sins. You came to the waters of baptism. You were buried in the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. And the moment you were baptized in Jesus' name, your sins were washed away and God filled you with the Holy Ghost. So he is looking for the righteousness of his blood when you stand before him. Saints, let me tell you something. You know, if you're playing with sin, stop playing with sin. Amen? Amen? It will destroy you. It will rob you. And when I got the Holy Ghost some 40 years ago now, I made this one commitment to God. I made other commitments, but this was my first commitment. When God baptized me with the Holy Ghost, I says, Lord, I'll never go to hell for anybody or anything. And I don't care who the anybody's was, and I don't care what the anythings are. Because God is not your will for me to go to hell for anybody. And listen, you need to understand that. You know, not everybody's going to agree with you. Even family members are not always going to agree with you. Family members are not always going to love you because what you love, amen. But God says you're not to go to hell for anybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. So. You know, when she was living that life, obviously in her heart, she was crying out to God. And as I just shared with you, you know, as I was searching for God myself, the ungodly things that I was doing, I knew I shouldn't have been doing. But I couldn't understand why I was still doing them. So when I asked God, I said, God... I'm supposed to be a Christian. Why am I still doing these things? God didn't speak to me. He didn't say, well, this is why. This is why. This is why. <laughs> Very briefly, God set me up. He said, well, how did God set you up? Remember, I was in a church, first of all, told me, watch out for people who speak in tongues. I was among a group of people who said everything negative about the Holy Ghost. And so being new and everything, guess what? I, I did. I stayed away from people. When I, when I began, I didn't know anything about tongues at the time, but once they mentioned that, all of a sudden, I met people who speak in tongues. But you know what I did, brother? When I met them and they told me about speaking in tongues, I did this. Oh, yeah, I walked away. I didn't even say goodbye. I just turned around and I just walked away. <laughs> Amen? So I said, God set me up. He caused somebody to invite me to a Bible study one time. I didn't go right away. But this one man kept on coming to me. He kept on coming to me. And he kept on coming to me. So one day, it was on a Wednesday, he came to my office and he said, Al, I'm having a Bible study tonight. Why don't you come? And I looked at him and I said to myself, you know, he's been asking me all this time. You know, I need to go. 
I said, hey, I'll be there tonight. I mean, that guy just is so excited. Hey, man, praising the Lord, just so excited. Well, I went to that Bible study. Okay, about 20 some odd people in that Bible study. And so they, they worshiped God. They sang songs. They had a Bible study. They prayed. And everything was wonderful. And then somebody began to do something in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, I said, oh, my God. <laughs> so I didn't look. I, I mean, I did look. But I kept my head down, and I kind of looked up like this here. And I didn't say anything because, first of all, I didn't want anybody to know that I was stupid, ignorant. You know, you know how we feel about ourselves. So I didn't say a word. I just walked, I left there very quietly. And on the following day, I was in a carpool, and that same individual and everybody else in that car was, you know, in the uh, in the uh, car. And I'm sitting in the back, and it's only a two-door car. But it was such an impression, such an impression, that I said, okay, that was Lois, because she was the one being used in the Holy Ghost. I said, but that wasn't Lois, was it? I knew there was something behind it. I knew there was a power, there was a force, that there was something, okay? And they all looked at me. I said, you didn't know? I said, I didn't know what? You don't know about the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues? <laughs> and I couldn't get out of that car because there was no door there. <laughs> but you see, that's how much God loves me. And that's how much God loves you. Amen. He loves you that much, amen, that he'll set you up. And that was the day when I said earlier, I made up my mind that when I got home from work that day, I was going to see... God, what does your word really say about this? And I discovered because God's setting me up, putting me in a very beautiful and pleasant place to experience all that I experienced, and I knew it was pleasant. You see, I knew it was good. And in this place here this morning, it's pleasant. Amen. And this place here, every time I've come here, amen, I'm going to tell you, it's always been pleasant. It's always good because God is here. Amen. And he makes it good. And he makes you good. Amen. He makes us good together. Amen. Such a love and a power and a wonderful spirit of God here. Amen. And that's why, because of the love of God, he set me up. Amen. And now I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. I wonder if you can stand. I want to finish up with one last. I could go on, but I want to finish up with one last story here. Just to show you another dimension of God's love. I said earlier, I said sometimes the hardest people to forgive is ourselves, especially when you walk with God for a long time. We struggle sometimes more so than we ever ought to struggle. We do. Because we know better. We love God, and we fail God, and we beat ourselves up. Amen? Anybody ever been there? Yeah. I have. Okay? Amen. But I was, uh, at one time, I was called by another pastor in the state of Virginia, but he lived, oh, maybe eight hours away. Virginia's a very long state, and he lived on the border of Tennessee. And uh, he called. I was pastoring at that time. He called me. He says, hey, Brother Andrew, he says, uh, he says, uh, I have a lady who's not in church, but she's from us. She lives a few miles from where you live. She's got cancer. And her parents, who are still in the church, want to know if you would go and pray for her, if she'd want you to pray for her. So I told this pastor, I said, sure. I says, let me know. I says, and uh, I'll be glad to go and pray for her. So the following day, he called me back, and he said, uh, she doesn't want anybody to pray for her. She's doing well. The cancer is gone. She doesn't need anybody. I said, okay. I said, however, if anything changes in her life and she needs somebody to come and pray for her, remember me, call me, and I'll go and pray for her. He said, okay. One year later, a phone call from the pastor. He said, Brother Andrioli, she has five forms of cancer. She's in the hospital. She's dying. She wants somebody to come and pray for her. I said, okay. The history of this young lady, she grew up in church, apostolic, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, loved God. But when she turned 18 years old, she left church. She left her home, 
married a man who never knew God, even to that day, never knew God. For 22 years, she never ever walked into church. For 22 years, she never visited God. For 22 years, she forgot about God. For 22 years, she lived her way. So I went down to the hospital. I said, God, I don't know this woman. I said, I've never met before. God, what do you want me to say to her? What would you have me to speak to her about, Lord? And the Lord spoke this to me very, very clearly. He says, you tell her. She may have not been where she ought to have been for the last 22 years, but I never left her. I never left her. You see, God's Word says you belong to Him. And sometimes you may feel like God has left you, but God never breaks His promise. He never breaks His Word. God is a true God. And when God says He will never leave you, you could leave Him, but He will not leave you. So when I walked into that hospital room, she's laying there, and I walked up to her and I says, listen, this is what God told me to tell you. And I told her exactly what God said. You've not been where you ought to have been for the last 22 years, but he's never left you. And I lay hands on her in that bed there. God refilled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when I saw God doing that, I saw such a dimension of God's love that someone could forget about him for 22 years someone not walk into his house and say hello God someone not be around but yet God never forgot about her and such a dimension of the love of God she passed away but she passed away renewed. She passed away filled with the Holy Ghost. She passed away forgiven because God has come to seek and to save them that are lost. Amen. And today, you can say she's like the thief, amen, who stole heaven because only in this case here, because she was a child of God and God never forgot her and God renewed the Holy Ghost in her. Did she steal, if I can say it in that way there, heaven is like the thief on the cross. Can we just begin to worship God right now? Hallelujah. And as you're worshiping God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn this back over to your pastor here in a moment here. Hallelujah. But I want to encourage somebody out here today. Amen. You know, you've come in here with tears today. God saw those tears, and he knows why the tears are there. Amen. You've come in here with a broken heart. Amen. And God saw that broken heart before you got here this morning. And God knew that you were struggling as you came here today. Amen. And God knows other things that are ever going on in your life. I want to invite you here to the altar. I'm not going to single you out. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. In fact, I would invite everybody here to the altar. But as you all come around the altar, I would invite you to trust God. I would invite you, amen, to talk to him. I would invite you to let someone pray for you. I would invite you to let God fill you with a gift of the living waters, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I would invite you to let God do a miracle in your life. Yes, because God is love. And maybe you don't think he cares about you, but if he can care about that woman, amen, for 22 years, he never took his eyes off of her. I said he never took his eyes off of her. Wherever she went, God was there because God says, I never forgot you. I never left you. I've been with you every moment of these 22 years. That is the power. That is the goodness of God's love, my friend. And God's love is right here. And God God's love wants to touch you today. God wants to transform you today. God wants to bless you today. God wants to heal you today. God wants to give you a 
sound mind today. God wants to give you the peace of God today. God wants to give you joy today. God wants to give you the contentment today. God wants to give you hope today. God wants to give to you today. Because you see, you've given to God. You've worshiped Him, amen. And you've been praising Him. And you've shown up in the house of God today. Yes, God wants to bless you. Hallelujah. I promise you, God wants to bless you this morning. Let God, hallelujah, hallelujah, just think on the Lord Jesus right now. Hallelujah. I just think on the Lord Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.